Hi guys, Ross here and welcome to my first tutorial. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make this animation displaying on the screen right now. We're going to be using After Effects and I will touch a little bit on Illustrator and a few settings we have to play with in that software, but we will be focusing primarily on After Effects. This isn't too complicated, so for anyone that hasn't used it before, you shouldn't feel worried or overwhelmed with what we're going to be doing today. It is fairly straightforward. So let's jump straight into it and get animating. So first of all, we're going to want to make a new project. So I'll just get rid of this one and a new composition. Now, this brings up a dialog box and we have a variety of settings which we don't really need to play with too much but there are a few main things we need to go over. So the width and the height is obviously the width and the height of the composition we'll be working. So 1080 by 1080 is the size I usually use for Instagram posts and that's what I'll be working with today. Of course, it's completely up to you what you do. If you're uploading to YouTube, 1920 by 1080 is what you want to go for. But obviously, if you're working on your own project, you know what size you want to work with. Down towards the bottom, we have the duration, so I'm going to go for 10 seconds today. Again, completely up to you with how long you want your animation to be. And I keep the frame, frame rate at 30, and then just hit OK. Now, here we have a composition which we'll be working. Before we import all our files, I just want to pop into Illustrator to go over a few things. So, here we have the hand lettering I've done which we'll be working on animating today. As you can see from the layer palette in the bottom right, I have put each letter on a separate layer. Now this is for a main reason of making the animation flow better because any overlapping part of the letter is going to make the animation look a bit sloppy because of the effect we'll be using. So as you can see here with the letter E I've put it into two separate parts because this little bit here overlaps with the back of the E and that's not what we want so I've put them into two separate layers and two separate paths. I know it's a bit of a hassle because letters like that don't necessarily need it but you have to think in your mind how you're going to animate it and that you want the animation to flow well so that's what you're going to have to do unfortunately. Um, so yeah, here's the lettering. I've got each layer, I mean sorry, each letter in its own layer um, named accordingly um, down the side. So just save this as you would any other Adobe Illustrator file and let's hop straight back into After Effects. So we're going to want to go File, Import, File, find our Adobe Illustrator file we're working with and open. Oh, before I open it, make sure that Import As is set to Composition, Retain Layer Sizes, not Footage. Um, that's a fairly important step because it's going to keep all the layers exactly how you want them like they were in Illustrator. So press open. Now as you can see we have a folder called style layers which is all the layers from our illustrator document and we have a pre-made composition with them all, them all in called style so if I just double click that that's going to open a composition with all our layers. Now layer 1, 2 and 3 I don't need because one of them was an image which I used to do my vectoring and 2 and 3 were guides so we're not going to need those so I can delete those. And the rest of them, as you can see, they're invisible at the moment. Now, what we want to do to fix that is select them all, right click and create shapes from vector layer. Once we've done that, we can now change the fill color on all of them to white. Obviously, you can change it to any color you want, but as I'm working on a black background, white is the obvious choice to go for. And we can now delete all the illustrator files. We don't need them anymore. So. If we hide all the layers using the eyes along the left hand side down here and just click and drag and get rid of those so now we have the S layer left so if we start with this one and we can start to animate it as you can see in the effects and presets on the right hand side I've typed in stroke this is the effect we're going to be working with today so if we make sure we've got the S layer selected and double click stroke and now it's popped up in the top left with all the effects and its parameters. If you don't have effects and presets on the right hand side, go to window and make sure effects and presets is ticked. Okay, now we've got the effects selected, the settings I usually go for, make sure all masks are ticked, make sure brush hardness is 100% and make sure spacing is zero. We then want to change the paint style from on original image to reveal original image. We are now going to create a path 
following the S, which is going to be used to animate the lettering. So if we use Command plus to zoom in, that will be Control plus on a Windows, and the space bar to move around. We then want to press G or press the pen at the top to get the pen tool, and then make sure that you have selected Tool Creates Mask on the top instead of Tool Creates Shape, because otherwise that's going to create a new shape layer, which is not what we want. We want a mask for this shape layer. And same as Illustrator and Photoshop, just click and drag to make curved points and just trace around your letter. It doesn't have to be exact, just a rough, a rough trace would do. And then you can use the direct selection tool, which is V, to change any of your points. So I'm just fixing up a few of these. There we go. Now we have a path which is roughly the right shape. We then want to go to brush size and change this up so it fills the whole shape of the S. Now, if we come down to end where it's 100% and take that down to zero, we can now see how we've started to animate the S. Now, here's the problem which I was talking about with the overlap. Because the brush size has to be big enough to fit the whole width and there's varying widths throughout the letter, you can see the paths overlapped into the middle of the S before we've actually got to that point in the animation. So that's why we have to have each letter on a separate layer, otherwise we'd get this overlap throughout and it's just going to make the animation look sloppy. So to fix this, this is quite an easy situation. We just grab the point and just move it forward a bit. Um, so that's a simple solution to that. So now we're going to keyframe the animation. So if we press, I mean sorry, if we take the end down to zero and press the little timer next to it, and then if we make sure we've got the layer selector still and press U, that's going to bring up all the keyframes we've made for that layer. And I'm just going to move along about 20, frame, 20 frames. On the far left, you can see how many frames or seconds we've moved in our composition. So I've moved 20 frames and I'm now going to change the end parameter to 100%. If we go to the top right, we can use the RAM preview, which is going to make a preview. And as we can see, we have a smooth animation of the first letter. Perfect. Now, the next step we want to do is make these keyframes an easy ease. So if we left click and drag over them to select them, and then press function F9, I believe that's the same on Windows as well, we have changed these keyframes to easy ease. Now, you may not notice much of a difference, but it does actually make it smoother. You can kind of see the difference there. Now then, we're going to want to repeat this step for all of the letters, and the best way to do it to make it smooth is make sure you're on the last keyframe, and that the next one starts at the end of the previous letter. So let me show you um, the step through this one first of all. So this is, I'm gonna have the S going into the T cross. So the cross for the T. So again, make sure we've got the T cross selected, double click stroke to apply it, 100% hardness, spacing down to 0%, make sure all masks are ticked, paint style, reveal original image, select your pen tool, make sure it's on tool creates mask and just create a path of the cross. Simple as that. Now we're going to increase the brush size, Turn the end down to a zero, press the timer to animate it, move again another 20 frames, so that would be 1 second and 10, up to 100%. And now if we just do a RAM preview, there we go. You can see that the cross starts to animate as soon as the S is finished. Of course, you can always bring it forward a bit if you want it to um, start before the S is finished. So if we just press U on the, the T cross layer, which reveals all the keyframes for that layer, left click and drag, select the keyframes and just move them to the left a bit. Again, make sure we pressed function F9 to make them an easy ease. And now if we preview it back, press play, you can see the cross starts just a tiny bit before the S finishes. There we go, just to make it a little bit smoother. So, we want to repeat the same for all the rest of the letters. So, 
down on the layers palette at the far left where the keyframes are, you see there's a left and a right arrow that goes in between the keyframes you've made. So if we go to the last keyframe on the T and then go to the next layer, which is the actual T, double click stroke and then we can start animating from there. So as soon as the previous letter is finished animating, the next one has started. And just repeat that for the rest of the letters. I'm probably going to speed the rest of this video up um, or the rest of this section up so that you don't have to watch me go through each letter and I'll be back with you afterwards. Okay, so I've just finished doing all the letters, animating them, so if we just press the play button now, and we can have a look at what we've made so far. Okay, brilliant. We've got a pretty good animation going on there at the moment, so just a few things I'd like to change. This underline at the end, i like it to be a bit slower, so if we select the keyframes, then press the graph editor, and Press V for the direct selection tool, select these two little points at the bottom and drag the handles, drag this one in a little bit so that's going to make the beginning of it a bit faster and then it should be slower towards the end so if I just, if you bring these two handles in here, I just come out the graph editor, you can just render a little specific bit so I just want to see the little underline at the end. So if I just bring that down, press render, how does that look? There we go. So you see it's slow at the beginning and then speeds up. And I'm also, just as a finishing touch, going to bring the keyframes so the underline starts about halfway through maybe the, the ease animation. So let's just try, let's refresh this again. There we go, I might bring it forward a bit more actually. Let's try this. Okay, and then now I've actually just noticed that if you look at the E, um, there's a bit of a delay after the first bit, so I'm just going to move those keyframes together a bit as well. So these are just kind of the finishing touches that you go go over after you've done the majority. So if I just if I go frame by frame. So there, when it gets to the end, the next one needs to ideally start there. So if I just move the keyframes back a little bit, so click and drag, select the both of them. Let's see, does it? There we go. So if we just preview this again, there we go. That looks a bit smoother now. So let's go back to the beginning, see if there's anything we can spot that just needs a bit of. What I might actually do is bring the T in so that when it's about halfway through doing the cross, the T starts. So to do that, what I'm going to do is, I've already got the keyframes open. I'm going to select all of them, except obviously the T cross and the S, and just bring them all forward to about there. So now, there we go, the T is started before the cross finishes. I might actually bring it forward just a few more frames, and let's have a look at how this looks. There we go, that's a bit smoother. Okay, if we just scrub through the timeline. That Y is a bit slow to start as well, so when the T finishes, it finishes about there. So we select all the ones from Y onwards, bring it forward. There we go. So as soon as that T finishes, actually it might bring it, there we go, bring it to about there. So as that T is coming to a close, that Y started. Same with the second bit of the Y. There's a bit. Of, there's a few frames delay. So if I just scroll through the timeline, and there we go. I'm just gonna select these keyframes, bring them all forward. And the reason you want to bring them all forward is because otherwise, if you just bring that layers keyframes forward, then there's gonna be a massive delay between that letter and the next one. So you'll drag from that layer onwards. 
the keyframes forward. So let's just preview this. See how it's looking. There we go, that's a bit smoother. Okay, I think we're actually done here. Um, on the next part, I'm probably going to split this into two because I'm, I'm getting on for time a bit now. I'll split it into two videos. The next part, I'm going to go over the little animations in between letters. So if I just show you actually what I mean. It might help if I reset this. Okay, I'll just show you what I mean exactly. You see that little stroke in between the S and the T? That's what we we'll work on in the next video, and between the Y and the L. It just brings, ties it all together a bit better. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I will catch you in the next part.